chaos energies are now running rampant across the lands. Flowing like a boundless river, they corrupt everything they touch. In such dire times, the followers of chaos rise from every settlement, city and corner of the world, looking to fulfill their destiny and serve their dark gods in a terrible variety of ways. Among them stand the tainted Chaos Dwarves, who abandoned their ancient and noble origins to embrace the darkness that now consumes them. The truth about the Chaos Dwarves is buried beneath lies and evasions, for they are the great shame of the Dwarves. Ask any Dwarf and they'll fiercely deny their existence. But protestations aside, Rumors of the great foundries in the Darklands, of horrid bull centaurs, of great cauldrons filled with molten metal hungrily devouring sacrifices to some blasphemous dark god ring all too true to be the result of idle speculation. It is said that in the direst of hours, and to survive the storm of chaos and the many horrors that were unleashed upon them, the dwarfs pledged their loyalty to a dark being known as Hashut, the father of darkness. From there, they began their path to damnation. Despite being naturally more resilient to the influences of chaos than most other races, they have been corrupted nonetheless, and they have fallen deep. Their physical form has been altered with the passing of time, and their use of magic has further twisted the minds and bodies of these once noble dwarfs. Black clouds of smoke can be seen from across the dark lands, while the incessant hammering of tools and the screams of their victims are heard all day and night as one gets closer and closer to the heart of their empire. It is widely known that the Chaos Dwarfs employ slaves, thousands of them, for they are the cogs that keep their evil furnaces and malign factories running. The Chaos Dwarfs are the embodiment of evil and the dark side of the Dwarf race. But how they came to be? How is it possible that a race so noble and stubborn as the Dwarfs got so corrupted by Chaos that the atrocities they now commit in the name of their Dark God are almost unnameable? Just how deep have they fallen? In this episode, we will explore how the Chaos Dwarves came to be, how they wage war, who leads them, and what are their motivations. We'd like to extend our massive thanks to the patrons and YouTube channel members that have joined us over the last few weeks, and all of you who constantly watch and enjoy the videos we make. Your support enables us to keep making content like this, we hope you enjoy this lore presentation. Ash, smoke and steam. The sinister slavery of the many to the benefit of the few. The Chaos Dwarfs, or Dawizar, as it is said in the Kazalid tongue, are vile beings of the Dark Lands. Even viler than the scheming hobgoblin carnets and the many other twisted creatures that call this area home. Cursed is their tongue, and damned is the name they call themselves in it, for unholy is their history, and it started thousands of years ago, before even the rise of men, during the Age of Expansion of the mighty Karazankor. As the Dwarfs grew and settled across the range of the World's Edge Mountains, they dug deep and dug greedily. And they expanded northwards, following the spine of the mountains. Like moths to a bonfire did they seek gems and metals, and to that end adventurous Dwarfs expanded to places that perhaps should have stayed forgotten. To the far north of the mountains there was Zorn Uskul, 
the great skull land, barren of soil and rich in minerals. Many dwarfs called the very stone cursed and kept moving on, some striving northwards into Norska, and some still going east into the mountains of Morn. But some were way too stubborn and stayed on that damp place. At first, those crafty folk remained in contact with their faraway kin, but the world grew dark around them, and communication between holds grew spare. As each citadel looked inwards for protection, as they dug deeper and deeper into the mountains and the many dark caves and tunnels they found and built. The time of the great coming of chaos arrived, and damned things, nameless, great and awful in all ways, attacked the dwarfs from all sides. The Karazhan Corps stayed together as they always did, and faced a storm head on. Assuming their faraway cousins were long dead in the face of such overwhelming odds. But chaos can be misleading, and instead of death, they saw great change, and change they did. Facing certain death, terrible demons were at their doorstep, and the dwarfs, as stubborn as they are, looked at their demise in the eyes and muttered, Not today. Surviving, fighting tooth and nail, they came to understand chaos. Embrace it, even. No one knows exactly what came to pass on those dark days, and what terrible things did the dwarves have to endure to survive. But what we know is that they were barely recognizable when they came out the other side, and they had forsaken their kinsmen and ancestors for a new god aided them. Hashut, father of all that is ashen and dark, master of industry and slavery. They wish to make the world a place of smoky darkness where hope and cheer are crimes punishable by immediate slavery and slow tortures. Theirs is an endless greed that neither time nor wealth can ever abate. They committed blasphemy by turning away from the ancestor gods and practicing magic. <laughs> magic, I tell you! They are our greatest shame, and they will be dealt with in time. The race of the dwarfs is unusually resilient to the touch of the Great Four and the influence of chaos, but these ones were changed nonetheless, slowly but surely. Superficially, they do resemble their cousins, but they are now grey of flesh and red of eye, horned and tusked, and sometimes even hooved and furred albeit those mutations are more common only amongst those who dabble in sorcery. It is the case that their bodies were changed, but the true target was the spirit. The traditional and good-natured values of your run-of-the-mill dwarf were replaced with macabre mockeries, replaced with the need to dominate and enslave all that breathes, to make the world their tool for conquering. And year after year, decade after decade, century after century, the Chaos Dwarf Empire grows from the Great Skull Land. For developing and expanding, the Chaos Dwarfs use countless slaves to carry their will and do the dirty and heavy work. with the blood and sweat of numberless slaves from across the world, was the mighty capital city Zar Nagrund built and its vast industries maintained. The tower of Zar Nagrund is built from obsidian, black volcanic glass whose surface reflects the tongues of fire of the myriad furnaces that burn incessantly through the day and night. To this day, the corrupted dwarfs ever hunger for more slaves, 
and their need for fresh blood to work only increases with each passing year as the empire of ash and smoke expands and its furnaces forever burn with the fire of industry. The culture of these dwarfs was corrupted too, but they remain unmistakably dwarf in nature. Oaths, honor, and kinship with each other are precious to them, but they hate all values and qualities that they see as weakness, such as mercy, and they see that it is destroyed from among their ranks. They even disregard others who call themselves worshippers of chaos, to them, the only way forward is through cold, calculating patience, mixed with greed, as opposed to the simple barbarities of the others. Wielders of dark magic and blissfully forgotten by wider civilization, the Chaos Dwarves are ruled with a molten iron fist by their demon smiths, sorcerers of chaos that use the lore of Hashut to their own dark objectives, as well as those presented by their evil god. Their lore is deep, evil, and ancient. Their studies center around the fusion of machines and magic to produce dreadful engines of power and destruction. Capable of transforming clean air into blackened, sickening smoke, bringing to life the most despicable of war engines, and bringing light to their hatred on the heart of all their followers and slaves, they are a terrible sight to behold. Each of them is extremely powerful, for there are only ever a few hundred in all of the Chaos Dwarf race, and they individually control entire sections of the dread city of Tsar Nagrund, or smaller citadels nearby and afar, for they are the puppet masters behind their own empire of ash and smoke. They are the supreme crafters of all that is horrible and destructive, and their war machines are used far and wide by the forces of chaos. A common example being the awfully efficient Hell Cannon. Made out of metal parts and moving with a demonic sentience of its own, the massive Hell Cannons are mighty arcane engines of war that even need to be chained to the ground to stop it from advancing towards the enemy lines driven by a terrible hunger of its own. Manned by a team of twisted chaos dwarfs, the Hell Cannons launch blasts of raw energy into the sky before coming down to explode against their unfortunate targets. Everything that is touched by the raw energy is consumed and liquefied and many are the ones that have gone crazy and mad just for being too close to one of those explosions of barely contained chaotic energy. The Hell Cannon is one of many war machines and twisted creatures that these malign dwarves have at their disposal. They go so far as to enslave creatures from the warp to their dark will binding them to terrible machines of war and constructs. So malign they are that they do not pursue contracts or dealings with these dark entities, rather they seek to bend their will so much that it is said that the Neverborn as a whole hate the Chaos Dwarves. The dwarfs even had to seek out other forms of binding or creating spirits, for the creatures of the war are said to tend to avoid them. But how is it possible for the Chaos Dwarfs to be able to do such things? How do they trap souls and sentient beings into their war machines? Well, when the Chaos Dwarfs turned to the Bull God of Hashut, there was a rising in the number of Chaos Dwarf Sorcerers among their ranks. With their newfound enchantments and powerful knowledge of dark magic, they amplified their hellish factories. They twisted the landscape, 
They created never seen before war engines and they constructed a terrible society powered by iron, sorcery, machinery and slavery. All bent to their dark will. It is important to know that there is no formal established leader nor strict hierarchy among the Chaos Dwarfs, but the strongest voice belongs to the oldest and most powerful, for as twisted and corrupt as they are, they still respect age and knowledge above all, just as much as other dwarfs. When the leaders of their race get together, they do so in a so-called Great Conclave where the High Priests of Hashut gather to discuss important matters of their race and their course of action. And although there is no High King, Emperor or a main center figure to lead them, except for Hashut himself, that is, there are some remarkable characters that are part of the Chaos Dwarves' history, and they play an important role within their society. Astrogoth Ironhand is the oldest living High Priest of Hashut, and as such, he is regarded as one of the mightiest lords this race has. As an extremely prominent user of dark magic, he has begun to slowly turn into stone, as happens with all Chaos Dwarfs that meddle with the dangerous magic that is available to them. To offset this growing limitation, he has devised a mechanical construct that is able to carry him from one place to another. His legs have already ceased to work and his hands are now beginning to turn to stone too. He has crafted for himself devious machinations that allow him to somewhat move normally, but the limitations are indeed more and more apparent as time passes. There will be a time when Astrogoth is turned completely into a being made of stone, along with the many other Chaos Sorcerers that are now no more than statues adorning the depths of the blackened citadels and foundries around the Tower of Zar Nagrund, city of fire and desolation. Despite this, his steam-driven pistons, which over time have replaced Astrogoth's muscles and sinews, allow this still powerful Chaos Dwarf Lord to strike his enemies with an extreme force. These have been constructed with great sacrifice from many slaves, and allow for the somewhat proper function of Astrogoth's limbs. It would be a terrible mistake to underestimate this eldest of dwarfs, for many are the ones who have fallen to his might for trying to overtake him, as the damned lands of the Chaos Dwarfs are not running short of aspiring champions and ambitious leaders. For over a thousand years, this powerful demon smith has ruled over the Black Fortress a mighty and imposing structure set in the banks of the River Ruin, built to guard the southern border of the Chaos Dwarf Domain. Miles upon miles from the capital city of Zarnagrund, Drazhoeth the Ashen was exiled to this location a long time ago by none other than Astrogoth Ironhand himself. But with wit and cunning, he arose to be the almighty lord of the Black Fortress. Through his power he gained dominion over the Legion of Asgore, a powerful army of Chaos Dwarf legionaries and hobgoblin slaves, and with it he destroys any and all who would harm his dark kingdom. Over the decades his power has grown, but it seems that it has reached its limit, for he is indeed very far from the center of politics and the priesthood of Hashut. But it matters not, for the power of Hashut also comes with a curse, and all of those who use it for long shall eventually become stone and perish. Drazhoeth knows this, and he bides his time waiting for Astrogoth himself to inevitably turn into stone, and so the patience of the Ashen pays him mighty dividends. 
In battle, Jazz Hoeth is both mighty with the axe and with the arcane winds, as he leads his terrible army in raids across the river to maintain the mostly predominant dominion of the Chaos Dwarf over these monster-infested lands. He rides the great and terrible beast known as Cinderbreath, a giant baled Taurus a supremely terrible being of metal, ash, and fire that takes the form of a great winged bull. This beast is loyal to his master and its master alone, and deals a heavy toll upon the enemy. Not to be outdone by his peers, Drazhoeth has created many an artifact for him to use in battle, for his own protection and for the bane of his enemies. The Hell Shard a talisman of arcane power that amplifies within its diabolical crystal core the hatred inherent within the heart of its creator, and unleashes it upon those who would dare spill the blood of the Ashen One, effectively dealing psychic blows upon any who would try to hurt the Demon Smith. And to amplify his casting prowess, he carries with him a powerful badge, the Graven Scepter, inscribed with the foul runic names of the previous lords of the Black Fortress, and inscribed with prayers to the Dark Lord Hashot. With the same intent, he carries a Demon Spite Crucible, a uniquely evil item, even for Chaos Dwarf standards. It was created using wrought meteoric iron, quenched with blood, engraved with blightened gold, and coated in layers upon layers of sacrificed souls. It grants arcane power untold to the wielder, and, worse yet, it robs any caster murdered in the vicinity of their soul, adding it to the coating and amplifying its power. A full army of Chaos Dwarves advancing is a terrible sight to behold on the battlefield. They are disciplined and strong as their traditional cousins, but twisted in a dark way to serve Chaos. In addition to the deadly war machines they employ, they are also able to use magic to devastating effects. Every single Chaos Dwarf can have many talents, they can be sorcerers, artisans, craftsmen, ironsmiths, and a variety of other functional duties. But every one of them is a highly trained warrior, able to fight hand to hand against powerful enemies. They wear blackened armor made of heavy plates, high helmets crowned with sharp horns, all covering their corpulent and twisted figures. They march as disciplined as their long-lost cousins from the Karazhan Corps, but with very different motivations. To crush their opposition and any and all who they consider as weak is their desire. To enslave them is their motivation. Their weapons and equipment range from massive axes and hammers to heavy sturdy shields and dangerous firearms that can cause heavy damage before the front lines have even clashed. Towering above them are beasts that are not from this world, or at least they should not be. For the horror of all the unfortunates that have to face the Chaos Dwarfs in battle, these monsters and gigantic war machines are what really makes this army terrifying. As if the Chaos Dwarfs themselves weren't enough, the abominable creations of the Dawizar range from varied creatures, many too abhorrent to describe, to gigantic machines that seem to have a sentience of their own. Bull centaurs are common in these terrible armies, and they advance imposingly among the ranks of dwarves. They are misshapen beings, twisted from the original Chaos Dwarf's form. They are the survivors of the time of chaos when dark magic corrupted the physical bodies of whatever they touched. They are corpulent, wild creatures whose hunger for flesh is always present. Their strength far exceeds that of a regular Chaos Dwarf, 
and thanks to their strange forms, they are able to move faster across the battlefield. Making their lairs across the Dark Lands, the Lamasu are strange creatures made of flesh and, arguably, twisted magic. They are known to not breathe air as everyone else does, but they breathe the power of magic itself, drawing more and more power as they do so. They are crafty creatures and way more intelligent than what their weird appearance would suggest. So intelligent they are, that it is said they tend to avoid open battle themselves, preferring to persuade other wild beasts to do the fighting for them. Some particular Chaos Dwarf sorcerers use Lamasu as mounts to ride into battle themselves, and this combination of physical strength and magical prowess would make any army think twice before going against such a mighty foe. Another terrible creature that has been seen among the ranks of the Chaos Dwarfs is the deadly Great Taurus. These are truly massive beasts that are said to never die, except by the means of violence. They are winged bulls, crowned with massive horns and heavy hooves, filled with rage and able to breathe fire. The most terrifying thing about these beings is that their skin burns with a fire so intense that blades, axes and maces melt and become blunt when attempting to strike this otherworldly creature. The blazing hot stables of the crimson and bronze Tauruses beneath the great temple of Zarnagrant are always heated by sacrificial fires kept burning night and day to appease the beasts kept in that darkest of places. Only the most powerful and mightiest servants of Ashut can even attempt to master and mount one of these monsters. Indeed, it is only by means of the most complex and dangerous spells that a Chaos Dwarf Sorcerer can even mount such a dangerous creature without themselves succumbing to their incinerating heat and voracious appetites. Black Orcs are another important component to these terrible armies. It is said that long ago, the Chaos Kindred of the Dwarfs needed a steady source of reliable troops to bolster their own ranks and consolidate their territories and grim forges. The Greenskins that they had as slaves at the time deemed less than adequate, so using their dark sorcery and a carefully applied breeding program, they set about creating a new strain of Orc. They sought to make them stronger hardier, and more intelligent so that they could better carry out the will of their Chaos Dwarfs. They succeeded initially, but their experiment went far beyond their expectations and desires. The Orcs presumably rebelled against their so-called masters and butchered them to the point of almost total annihilation. Then the Orcs escaped from a life of miserable slavery to a life of incessant warfare, violence, and the constant need of survival. From then on, the Chaos Dwarfs and the Black Orcs have made their own paths in the world, oftentimes tainted with much blood, iron, and in the case of the Chaos Dwarfs, sorcery. This is not to say that many Black Orcs are still used to this day within the ranks of the Chaos Dwarf armies, and they are very dangerous for any foe that has to face them in combat. As the intense battles unfold, great war machines support the Chaos Dwarfs with artillery, magic blasts, and raw energy projectiles that cause heavy damage to the foe. Aside from the terrible Hell Cannon, the Chaos Dwarfs also employ the so-called Dreadquake Mortar. These are some of the most useful war machines the Dwarves have in their arsenal. Produced in the depths of their smoke-filled industrial zones, these mortars are so heavy and bulky they need to be lifted and carried with steam engines specifically designed for the task. When they fire their load, the earth shakes and the walls are knocked to the ground, generally not being able to withstand a single blast to these infernal machines. The shells alone take a robust ogre to handle the metal spheres and properly load the mortars with their munitions. I tell you, their cannons were phenomenally powerful. Their shells shoot the land so hard it moved like it was water. 
Many horses fell and broke their legs. As to the Kislevite and my fellow mercenaries, it was a slaughter. I managed to survive only because the unit I was with routed early. I later learned that those they didn't kill were taken away in chains. <laughs> Sigma alone knows where. I left Kislev soon after, with a taste of ashes in my mouth. Another deadly machine in the service of the Chaos Dwarfs is the dreaded Magma Cannon. A strange combination of a furnace and a field artillery piece. This cannon fires molten metal to its unfortunate victims who are left to suffer a hot, painful death. This weapon is best used against small targets and groups of enemy infantry, as this is a relatively short-ranged weapon. Under the dark clouds that hang above the dark lands, below the desolated and blackened surface of those damned lands, factories work day and night to ensure a constant flow of weapons, armor and war machines that come out of these hellish forges at alarming rates. To the horror of the world as a whole, there is no sign that they will stop any time soon. The soldiers from the Empire advanced, holding their weapons tight. The earth below seemed to crack as they moved, and the featureless sky above rained ash and threw hot winds against them. No plant could grow in the ash that smothered the surface, and vast open cracks on the ground showed hot lava beneath. It was as if the nature of that place itself was dead, and somehow still working against them. We have marched many miles, but there is no distance so great that I would not gladly march it to face this, our ultimate foe! The black-clad army brought forth their massive hell cannons, a fusion of demonic spirits and hell-forged machinery. The energies released by those cannons tore reality apart as they arced above towards the advancing humans. The blasts constantly slamming into their ranks, scattering warriors and leaving a trail of dead and twisted remains in their wake. No armor, shield, or physical toughness was a protection against a blast from these otherworldly weapons. As the armies clashed, the superior strength and armor of the dwarfs was made evident, and the magic unleashed upon the disciplined ranks of the Empire caused heavy casualties. Many soldiers were consumed by fire, devoured by the white-hot spirals of fire that left only burnt flesh and smoke in their wake. The cavalry that was brought was not enough. The Chaos Dwarfs advanced as an unstoppable force that devoured the battlefield, leaving only dead soldiers and prisoner material behind. They closed ranks and advanced in formation, making openings and closing them to isolate their targets. One by one, and in quick succession, the formations of the Empire broke, and many fled the battlefield, running for their lives.
After the battle, the Chaos Dwarfs killed any who dare put any resistance and chained all the others. They took the prisoners with them back to the foundries and factories of their lands. The damned soldiers that managed to flee the field of battle were only buying some extra time as they were way far from home and the Dark Lands are a truly unforgiving place. If not killed by the many mutant creatures that roam the lands, then they were later captured by dwarf expeditions that constantly hunt for new fresh slaves to bring into their dominions. In the capital city of Tsar Nagrund, lines of damned individuals and chains converge into one another, merging into larger columns of slaves. Captured beings from all races and corners of the world constantly flow into the depths of the industry buildings and black gateways. The poor souls, never to see the light of the surface again. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.